Welcome to VM Blog's 2022 Mega Series, and today we have the pleasure of speaking to Ben Skelly, the Solution Evangelist and Head of Growth at Vicarious. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. To start things off, why don't you just give us a quick background information on the company and maybe talk about where things are headed into 2023. Yeah, so first and foremost, Vicarious is a vulnerability management solution focused largely on automating the full lifecycle VM process from discovery, prioritization to mitigation and beyond. Um, the, the company itself has been around for about the last five or six years, but really entered hyper growth in the past year or two, um, founded by security practitioners who were really just, I think, sick of the manual processes that surrounded most VM programs, including the ones they were in. Um, I think a lot of people would be shocked, even even looking at massive enterprises at, at the, the relatively immature programs, which are, you know, complicated by ownership confusion and just manual time consuming processes. So I think rather than than spending an eternity in, in spreadsheet hell and never getting ahead, they, they built this this automation platform to make their own jobs easier and then took it to market where adoption has been pretty great. Um, and that focus on automation is really at the at the core of the company as a whole. But as it relates to our solution called Topia, um, users deploy an agent which discovers the assets on their network, prioritizes what to focus on based on context unique to that environment um, and deploys or, or schedules patches automatically, which really minimizes downtime and impact to the business. Um, having been around other VM companies who are also doing awesome work, I, I truly think that the way Vicarious tackles this issue is one of the most novel and complete that I've seen. Um, and through a, a focus on teaming with open source initiatives and, and building a security community of our own, we're really trying to democratize this aspect of security for organizations large and small with a comparatively low barrier to entry. And how would you say that Vicarious is different from your competitors and, you know, what makes you unique? Um, and also, why would somebody choose Vicarious over some other competitors in the industry? So so several ways, but I I like to take a step back here as it's a, it's a pet peeve of mine ever since I got involved in kind of the VM space. But there's there's a lot of market confusion around what vulnerability management even is. And I think a lot of analysts who I know mean well haven't really kind of helped the issue. And, and this is relevant because a lot of solutions we're grouped as, as competition with really aren't competitors because we're doing something totally different. And, and this isn't unique to Vicarious. It probably isn't even unique to this industry. But but putting us up against just a, a scanner or an RBVM tool or a patch management tool isn't really fair to us or really any of those other companies because it's not apples to apples. And I think like thanks to first mover benefits, a lot of people associate VM with the big scanner vendors, your Tenable, Qualys, Rapid7, which are great tools, successful companies. Um, but the truth is scanning is their strength and, and discovery is just one, albeit a very important step in a broader, mature VM program. And, you know, they're they're great at showing you what's there, but it, it's it's not enough to just know what's in your environment. You, you also need to have a plan to take action, ideally within the context of that environment. Uh, there's no shortage of of tools on the market that can help with that, which really kind of spawn the rise of that that risk based VM market and a handful of popular solutions that enable them, which are incredibly useful tools. But RBVM is really reliant on the other tools in your ecosystem. They're, they're, they're giant integrators helping all these tools in your ecosystem work together as one, which, again, is really cool stuff. But it means your program is only as useful as the other tools you've bought and deployed, which can obviously get expensive, confusing, and, and frankly, it's untenable for smaller enterprises, especially. So so coming down off that rant, I guess what makes Vicarious unique is kind of the holistic nature of the platform. It has the capabilities to perform every step of that mature VM program without requiring those third-party tools and licenses and expenses. So we provide the ability to scan your network, build an asset list, 
prioritize fixes and, and deploy those fixes with just one license. Uh, we also make it incredibly easy to try for free without ever sitting on a sales call or, or waiting for a demo, which is something I'm personally passionate about enabling because security shouldn't be as hard as we've kind of collectively made it. And, and that starts, I think, with the availability of tools and knowing if they're right for your goals. Now, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, some of the confusion, the marketing around vulnerability management. Can you dive in a bit deeper into what, you know, what the elements are that make up a mature vulnerability management program? Yeah, I, I think if you if you ask three vendors about a good maturity model, you'll get about seven different answers. <laughs> so there's a there's a few things I think most all will agree with that that organizations should be doing to kind of maintain that that mature posture, mature VM operation. And the first is that discovery piece. It's scanning for discovering, aggregating the assets in your environment, having an accurate and updated picture of of all those assets and devices is obviously critical because you can't fix what you don't know is is maybe broken. Um, next is a step that we commonly see bungled, I think, and that's just knowing how to prioritize the vulnerabilities that you do have. And, and it makes a lot of teams frustrated and start to feel alert fatigue, I think. So what's what's important to account for and, and where a lot of people and solutions fall short is, is that failure to take business context into account. It's critical to focus on those potential threats that will have a real impact to your unique environment, not necessarily what a third party rating assigned without any context of what's happening in your ecosystem or, or what's important to you. Um, and then once you're operating at that level of efficiency and maturity, obviously the next step is, is remediation, typically through patch management and deploying updates. Um, the most mature organizations automate this process based on that, that context mentioned earlier, updating the the critical systems while minimizing the downtime and impact through that strategic scheduling. And, and lastly, is basically a reboot of the process, just continuous monitoring and reporting, measuring your progress, reporting up the chain on risk, tracking known vulnerabilities and acceptable risk, and just making decisions for the program based on that holistic picture. That's probably an oversimplistic way of framing it, but those are kind of the core pieces of maturity and VM that I think most agree on. And how would you respond to organizations questions of do I really need to invest in security? Yeah, I would I I'd like to turn it around on them and can you afford not to? I mean this is it's an age old debate, right? Between security and management, it's kind of a chicken or the egg thing. If I if I'm not being breached, why am I spending so much on security? Which can seem like a fair question until you're inevitably breached. Um, security solutions have come a long way, but with every advancement, there's a, a counter offensive to exploit it or work around it. And, and network and application vulnerabilities remain one of the most significant exploit vectors that there are. I saw a report the other day, actually, that, that software vulnerabilities have surpassed phishing as the number one way that threat actors are gaining access. And it's, it's an issue that, that transcends industry and company size, uh, although both sides of that spectrum have their own unique issues to be mindful of. Like small organizations, you know, they lack the, the resources to keep pace and large enterprises are more susceptible due to just the, the sheer volume of systems and the amount of users that, that need to be accounted for. Um, and, and, and that's a benefit to a tool like our, like our own, which we probably don't focus on enough, is that you can you can end up saving money and, and giving it back to your budget through efficiency improvements alone. Just eliminating that manual work saves a lot of time and resources, which you can reallocate to other more pressing business needs while not necessarily sacrificing security. Kind of following up on that, uh, are there any tips or tools for a smaller enterprise or uh, you know, those teams who are operating on a shoestring budget to try to stay secure? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a great question and something we're we're definitely passionate about here. So the first thing I point out, with, without even spending a dime, is to get involved with just the broader security community. There, there's a lot of tools and resources out there. Um, I I alluded to it earlier, I think, but threat actors have always collaborated in in some fashion, sharing TTPs to to stay a step ahead and. We're long overdue, I think, as a, as a security community to do the same. A somewhat shameless plug, but we recently launched 
a community of our own called V Society, which is is free from vendor influence, including our own, as a place for security people to collaborate on vulnerabilities, share remediation scripts, and just learn and network. Uh, the goal really goes back to that democratizing buzzword and giving tools and insights to, to teams that wouldn't have access otherwise. Um, likewise, you can look at, at free and open source tools on the market and make use of them. There's some some great stuff out there that you won't get an angry email from finance over. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to do our part and contribute to some of these projects as well. Uh, most recently, we released a free integration for NMAP, which is one of the more popular open source free scanning tools on the market that, that most of your audience will probably recognize. Um, and a free tools and community won't cut it, but your budget doesn't really allow for you to buy a bunch of licenses or, or more butts and seats. There's no shortage of awesome managed security service providers who can kind of function as an extension of your own team for a fraction of the cost and, and no need to buy those licenses on your own. And what would you say are some trends that are impacting security and vulnerability management strategies this year? Yeah, so one of the ones we're seeing a lot, which is a bit unfortunate, depending on how you look at it, is companies just trying to do more with less, be it less headcount, less budget. Uh, there's There's been a lot of fear and uncertainty around the economy and the the possibility of like a large scale recession and, and technology in particular has been hit pretty hard there with, with layoffs and then static hiring, which seems to be picking back up a little bit, but there were definitely some, some rough months there. I, I'm sympathetic to that situation because when you need to go into self-preservation mode as a company and save budget, it's it's easy to make the argument to cut or protect almost any department, I think. And, and going back to something that we touched on a, a minute ago, security becomes a target because if you've been doing it well, it's easy to to start to question why it's such an expense center to begin with. You know, why are we spending money here when nothing ever happens? And of course, we, we know the answer to that question is nothing ever happens because we spend the money there. But many people don't want to hear that. Uh, and if, if the decision is between cutting a revenue generating team or cutting a team who spends a bunch of money only to say nothing happened, then it, it can be an easy decision to to the uninitiated, I would say. So, so tying some of those threads together, you know, we had been seeing the trend earlier with the the integrators, the RBVM tools that, that kind of bring all these other tools, your scanners, your SIMs, your ticketing, reporting, threat intel, all into that one view, which again is super valuable. But, but now I think a lot of savvy organizations are kind of stepping back and maybe asking themselves, do, do I really need all these different disparate tools? Can I accomplish something similar with for fewer licenses and, and how can I rein that expense in without sacrificing security? And at least as it relates to VM, I guess, shameless plug number two, are your tools like Vicarious, which can perform that, that discovery, assessment, prioritization, remediation, reporting, just all from that one license and one expense. Now, in your opinion, who's more vulnerable to threats in this modern digital landscape? Is it smaller organizations or big brands and why? Yeah, it's kind of a tricky question because I think you could make a legitimate argument either way, um, but but for different reasons, which again, I think we kind of touched on. Like smaller teams, they lack those resources and the budget to stay as secure, whereas those bigger brands just have massive attack surfaces that are just so hard to defend from every angle. And I think with humans being one of the weakest elements in, in any enterprise, the larger you are, obviously, the more vectors there are to, to exploit. So again, going back to an earlier thread of the conversation, if, if the smaller teams can be scrappy and nimble enough and lean on free tools and stretching their budget and leaning on the broader community, I think it's generally going to be easier for them to put up and monitor defenses than the more massive counterparts. And that's not to say it's easy, just easier. And again, that kind of assumes they're making the most of what's available to them. And maybe just to wrap up some of the key features of your product, what would you say are the two or three key features of your solution that people should be aware of? Sure. So first and foremost would be that prioritization piece. So like I like I mentioned, this is probably the most critical piece that a lot of organizations aren't really optimizing for today as much as they probably could. They 
they rely on those third party severity ratings or, or black box vendor scoring, which completely overlook or or don't include that context of your own unique environment. And all environments are unique to a degree. So so we call these X tags where you can set priority based on any number of factors that are important to you, like known vulnerability or has an exploit or high usage as a good example. And if that vulnerability matches one or more of those X tags, you can raise the priority. So you're really focusing on the threats that actually matter to you and will have an impact. Um, and then second would probably be the the auto actions piece, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's setting automated actions on these, like these enable your IT and security teams to automate those repetitive, tedious and, and time consuming tasks like patch implementation. So they can really kind of set it and forget it and, and focus on other tasks. Um, patching and updating can be disruptive to, to business units. So the other cool thing about auto actions is that that scheduling piece. So you can schedule updates for, for relative downtimes to really minimize the impact to those business units. Well, thanks. It was great to have a chance to speak with you today and learn more about Vicarious. Where can people go if they want to find out more information about Vicarious and some of the things you talked about today? Sure. So, so at our website, vicarious.io, um, we're we're really big on the the product led motion. So almost nothing is gated. We're not trying to hide anything behind forms or forcing you to talk to sales before you learn more. So so right on our homepage there, you can take a a guided demo of the product on your own time and own terms right inside the platform. Um, and then second would be vsociety.io, which is our community that I mentioned it recently launched, but quite active already with great discussion. It's open to anyone who wants to be active in the security and vulnerability community, whether you're an expert already or or someone who wants to learn more. So check it out. Well, thanks for being part of our mega series and we look forward to hearing from you guys in the future. Yeah, thank you guys.